Buying gifts can be stressful, time-consuming, and expensive. So why not give a delicious gift from your kitchen? It's special because you made it, and even more so if it's unique or better than anything they can buy. Today, I'm going to show you a food gift that is simple, fast, inexpensive, and beats any store-bought version, hands down. I'm talking about premium pretzel rods. Are you ready? The kitchen is now open. Yay! Hi, I'm Deb, and this is my kitchen. Our family was built at the dinner table, and I want to help you to build yours. So here you'll find recipes, cooking skills, and tips on making your dinner table a fun, tasty, and happy place. If you're new here, thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing. Today, we're making a gift from your kitchen, premium pretzel rods. Come on in, let's cook up something good. To make premium pretzel rods, the ingredients I'm using today are pretzel rods, and I prefer the ones that come in a canister or a tub for less breakage, but you can use the ones that come in a bag as well. One to one and a half pound blocks of white melting chocolate or milk chocolate melting chocolate, both are also called almond bark, or you can use candy melts, and those come in all kinds of colors, your choice. Assorted toppings that I'm using today are crushed candy canes, crushed candy bars, cake decorating sprinkles, melted caramel, mini chocolate chips, and mini M&Ms. But again, be creative. Use the things that you enjoy. The tools I'm using are two cookie or baking sheets, parchment or wax paper, a meat mallet or hammer, a large knife, two tall narrow glasses or jars, a long-handled spoon like an iced tea or bar spoon, or a slender spatula, quart-sized freezer zipper bags, scissors, skinny treat bags, and assorted ribbon. The first thing we're going to do is prepare our pan. So this is just a simple baking sheet. You can use any kind of cookie sheet, anything that's flat. And then I've torn off a piece of parchment paper just to lie down there in the middle of it. Um, if you don't put parchment paper on here, you're going to hate yourself because your chocolate will stick horribly to the pan. So the parchment paper or wax paper is super, super important. Okay, we're just going to set that to the side. And the next thing we're going to do is prepare some of our toppings. So I have some candy canes here. This is a great way to use your broken candy canes. Or you can also use those little round mints. They call them starlight mints. Um, and you just take and un unwrap them and then put them in a zipper bag. And then I'm going to put it between this towel just to cushion my countertop and uh, my hammer. I'm going to use a meat mallet, but you could certainly use a hammer. Either one works. And all we're doing is crushing this. Let's give it a look. Well, I think I need to be a little more aggressive. Okay, I'm going to act a little angry this time. Several boring seconds later. Now we're getting somewhere, but it still has some more to go. But you see the process. I'll go ahead and finish chopping that up some more in a few minutes. I also want to show you that I'm using some Butterfinger here. And for this one, rather than banging it with a hammer, I'm going to use a sharp knife and just chop through it and just crunch it up. And I want to get this really quite small. That's why I'm going to have to go back to that peppermint some more because think about it's going to go on these little skinny pretzel rods. So it has to be small. That's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in this bowl. And then the last thing I want to do real quickly is 
um, talk about the chalk that we're going to use. Now, just so that you know what to look for, it often looks like it's packaged this way in a big brick, either the white or the milk chocolate, and then you can see how it's scored in, in uh, blocks. So in order to break this up, you could, I suppose, use your hammer, or you can do like I often do and whack it, I mean hard, on my counter and break it up in pieces. Or you could probably take maybe a butter knife or a sharp knife and be careful and get down there in between and put some pressure on it and break them up. I happen to have these left over from another project, so it's really nice. They're already broken up for me. So I'm just going to pop them in to my tall, narrow glass. You can use that or if you happen to have maybe some leftover tall jars from, say, um, like pepperoncini or something that comes in a tall, skinny jar, those would work great, too. And I'm just going to start off with three blocks in each one. And at this point, we're ready to go to the microwave. First, an important tip. Anytime you're doing melting of chocolate for dipping, it's super important to make sure that anything that might come in contact with it, the cup, the spoon, anything is 100% dry. The slightest bit of water in it will ruin the chocolate. It'll make it look dry and crunchy and no matter, no, mo no matter how much melting you try to do, it's done. So I made sure my cup was dry, my spoon was dry, and I started with three cubes of chocolate. I put it in for one minute on full power. Then I used my spoon, kind of pressed it down, and I was able to put a couple more cubes of chocolate in. Then I ran it for 30 seconds, pushed it down, stirred it a little bit, and was able to get one more. So I got six chunks of chocolate, put it in for a last 30 seconds. So that's a total of two minutes. And now you can see I have this beautifully melted chocolate ready to go. Then I did my caramel now you have to be really careful with this because it goes so fast. It only took about 30 seconds and it was ready to boil over the top. And you can see it's also getting thick again really fast. So before I use it on the pretzels, I'll probably give it another quick zap. But for now, we're headed back and we're gonna start dipping. Now is when we get to have some fun and maybe get a little bit creative too. So I'm gonna take some of these pretzel rods and take my melted chocolate, a little bit hot, and tip that glass just a little bit so that I can get my pretzel in there as much as possible. And you can see I'm kind of spinning the pretzel around. And then I need to take a minute to try to shake off as much of the extra chocolate as possible because if it's on there too goopy, it's just gonna run off onto my pan. Okay, and then we're going to set this right down here, and we'll go ahead and do another one. Now, as you go along, you'll find that uh, the chocolate level starts to get lower and lower in your cup because, of course, you're putting it on the pretzels. If it starts to get too low, simply put another block of of chocolate in there and go back to the microwave and zap it for 30 second increments again until it's all nice and smooth and then you just keep on dipping. Also as you're working if it just starts to get a little thick and it doesn't want to um, cooperate as well as it did again just take it back and give it another little zap. Get another one here. Now, this part is a little tricky for little kids, um, but some of your tweens can do the dipping part like this, and everybody can get in on the decorating. That's really fun and easy to do. Kids love to give gifts to their teachers, grandma and grandpa, their neighbors, their friends. Uh, let's see, gosh, what am I gonna do first? Ooh, peppermint. I finally got a crunch down. And all I'm going to do is sprinkle some on this, right on the chocolate. And I'm doing it quickly 
rather than filling up the whole pan because I want the chocolate to still be soft so that these sprinkles will stick. I'm gonna get some of those little red ones on there. So it's like little holly berries. Yeah, I can see some of them are trying to get on my neighboring pretzel. I don't want that, so I'm just gonna pull those out of the way. No big deal. Now, here's another trick. I have taken some of those um, candy discs and I put them in a zipper freezer bag. Do use the freezer ones because they're thicker. Do not zip it shut because I'm afraid it might blow up. But put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. Check it and see if it's soft. And if so, you bring it over, use your pair of scissors and just cut off just the tip of the corner and you have just made yourself a piping bag. And then you can go back and forth and just make a neat little design like that. And I like to come back again with the white chocolate and then zigzag kind of the opposite direction. They're starting to get a little cooled off so they're getting thicker now. Again, if that happens, you just go back and melt them again. And let's try that caramel. Let's see if it's soft. It sets up so, so quickly. Well, I'm just going to give it a quick 10 seconds here. And while that's happening, let's try some of this uh, Butterfinger. That would be really good on there, I think. Get that peanut butter crunch. Yum. Let's dip one more so that we can try the caramel too. I would not let the kids do this one because it is so, so hot. In fact, you'll see as I put it on, it'll probably start melting the chocolate a bit. Oh gosh, it's so thick. There we go. I want to get just a little ribbon of it on there if I can. The um, caramel is especially delicious, I think, on the white chocolate. In fact, I think I'll put a little white chocolate on here. It's pretty wild. It's gonna taste awesome. And then we still have all of these other sprinkles, so I'm gonna keep busy keep doing some more. And then when I get done with the milk chocolate ones, I'm going to melt the white chocolate exactly the same way and keep going and make another tray of white chocolate ones. For me here, it's actually cooler out in my garage than it is in my kitchen. So I like to take them and just set them out there for maybe 15 minutes, just long enough to let that chocolate set up. Then we'll bring them back in and bag them up and show you how to present them as a gift. Hi, I'm back. During our breakaway, I quickly dipped 12 pretzels in the white chocolate and went ahead and decorated them up just like we did with the milk chocolate with various toppings. And then everything went out to the garage with the, the other ones and it stayed out there for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now I've brought them back in and I can show you here that it's nice and solid. It's not liquid anymore. So it's time to bag them up. I just slid the pretzel down into our nice little uh, cellophane bags and then used some small ribbon to tie it off. And it's nothing fancy, it's just like tying your shoe. And then the last step is just to very carefully give it a gentle squeeze. Do be gentle because you don't wanna break the pretzel, but what we're doing is forcing the air out past the ribbon to help that uh, pretzel stay fresh longer. So that's what a single one might look like. Now here's some other options. I took five of them and I deliberately chose ones in browns and whites and kind of a gold color with the uh, Butterfinger on the top and then picked up that white and gold glittery uh, theme there. And that's a little bit of a more fancy presentation. Maybe that one's for the boss. Here's another idea. Uh, here's just a tin and I'm gonna pop this open and you can see I was able to put 
eight assorted pretzels in this tin. And what a nice presentation, what a lovely gift. And that's probably about $2 investment to make that gift for someone. And again, you made it. So the cost is immaterial. The fact that you made it and it's delicious is what makes it so special. Now here's a canister that I've put a dozen in and then I've kind of blinged out the lid with some crazy gold ribbon and this poinsettia um, ornament to all kind of tie the colors together. The lid goes on, I tape it shut and there's a special gift of a dozen handmade pretzels for someone. And here's one last idea, just an inexpensive holiday themed coffee mug. I put some pretzels in the middle and then I just get a roll of cellophane and cut off a hunk and wrap it all up and use some wired ribbon to tie it off. Again, nothing fancy, just like tying your shoes, but there's a beautiful presentation and a mug that somebody can continue to use and enjoy. There's so many different ways you can present these and each one can be unique, special coming from you and unique because you know the person you're giving it to so you can tailor it to them. I hope you like this video and that you'll try making these treats. If you do, send me some pictures. I'd love to see your creative ideas of different toppings and different ways that you've presented your pretzels. And please be sure that you share this video far and wide so that we can help as many families as possible because family is built at the dinner table and if you feed them, they will come. Oh,